So let it be written. So let it be done. You are watching Tabletop Terrors. My name is Tim, and at Tabletop Terrors, we believe that anyone can be more creative. We use tabletop RPGs to prove it. This is Offhand Attack. Random, interesting streams about creativity and tips and tricks for tabletop RPGs. Today, we're going to be talking about encounters. Because, and this is the truth, no matter what, this is an inalienable truth. Every game master is looking for an encounter idea always. And so today we're gonna to talk about how you can get brand new encounter ideas uh, and be focused, and we're gonna talk about that. However, I wanna make it clear that we are not going anywhere until we do a Tabtarian Toast. I got this blue monster here uh, because it was like 40 degrees in Florida this morning. So, she's as cold as ice. So, raise your drinks with me, Tabtarians. May you mend the first break. May you kill the first snake. And may you conquer everything you undertake. Slanja. All right, I got my notes here. The reason why I have notes is because this is actually a blog article. This actual uh, concept is something that I wrote for the RPG Blog Carnival. If you're familiar with John Four, who's been around in the RPG community since 1999, uh, he's got a newsletter, he's got a website, he's got some online tools and things like that. Um, you know, connected with him. And so we're hosting, Tabletop Terrors is hosting the blog carnival at tabletopterrors.com, which is basically, we pick the month's uh, topic, we write our article, and then other cool bloggers uh, around the RPG blogosphere post articles, and then I post links in the comments to theirs, and they post links in the comments to mine, so everyone gets to see each other's. So that is what blog carnival is, but, this is Offhand Attack. This is a live stream. Let's see who's here today. Joshua Law is here. Josh Glisson, Stephen Back, Jeremy Lilly. Already, the awesome is up to here. Jeremy Lilly. Howdy, everyone. Chris Wilhelm is here from Drop Dice. I saw a picture that I'm going to send you, Chris, of this samurai fighting this huge crocodile underwater, and it made me think of, uh, of you. Nathan Thurston. Encounters! Jason Smith is here. Morning, folks. Hey, hey, Nathan Crouch. Drake Warren, a prolific and amazing Dragon Grin Dungeon Master. A man after my own heart is here. Afternoon. Stephen Back says, ah, damn, I'm out of monster. Well, I got one right here, buddy. This is for you. One for you and one for my homies. You are my homies. I did that wrong. Josh Glisson, what's up? Greetings, heroes, says Jacob Norman. Joshua Law. Alan Holloway is here. Another phenomenal Dragon Grin Dungeon Master. Um, man, just a good stream today. Josh, listen, Blog Carnival. You're a carne carne now. <clears throat> All right, so, encounters. Like I said, and this is the truth, inalienable. If you're a game master, you're looking for an encounter idea. You are. You have a game coming up. You need one. And we all do the same things, whatever your pattern is, whether it's Google D and D encounters. You're surfing Reddit. You're looking for blog posts. Well, let's talk about this because I think this process has helped me a ton. And the first thing is, you, this is not going to be a surprise to you, is you're going to write a mission statement. So I'm really big on this right now. I'm really big on writing a mission statement. And here's why: as game masters, we want our encounters to be challenging. We want them to be unique. We want them to be fun. We want them to be everything. But that's the problem. We try to cram too much into an encounter thematically, especially in the genesis when we're trying to think of it. And it's difficult to come up with anything because everything is an option. I need, a new, I need an encounter for my next game. Do you do this? Listen to me carefully. Do you do this? Because I do this. You imagine your players in a generic flat floored room or uh, an outside sort of grassy hill. It's just this boring nothingness. We're going to obliterate all that. We're going to just make sure that that is not what happens to you. The way we're going to do this is choosing a mission statement. And it's a simple formula. 
I want to create an encounter that feels like X using Y similar to something like Z. I want to create an encounter that feels like X using Y similar to something like Z. So in this formula, here's what you fill in the blanks with. X is a tone or a feel, okay? So I want to create an encounter that feels like X. What do I mean? Typically, a genre works best here. Um, you know, if it's, you know, hard-boiled detective noir, it could also be an emotion. It could be sad. I want an encounter that feels sad. You know, anything. It's But typically, a genre or an emotion works really well here. And you just plug that right in. Then using why. So what am I saying? Well, you want to find some sort of a focus, the thing that you're going to use to accomplish that tone. Sort of the, the, I would say the vehicle in which the tone is going to live. Just the kind of linchpin that you're going to look at. And then you want to say similar to something like Z. Z is an example film, a book, a movie, something that what you're doing is you're borrowing this immediate frame of reference and you're drawing from the tone that you can imagine in your mind until you fill in the blanks with your own, okay? So, some examples would be, I have them written down here, I want to create an encounter that feels like survival horror, that's my X, using zombies, that's my Y, similar to something like The Walking Dead. Now, you get it. You know what I'm doing right there. There's no mystery in this encounter. Um, let's hit a few more examples, but first, let's take it to the chat. Let us see what you folks are thinking right now. Neftali Ramos is here. Yo, yo, yo. Alexander Caustic, what's up, man? Alan Holloway says, Tim, you have advantage. Gain sneak attack damage. That's great, man. Let's see here. Hey, Laith says, finally caught one of these. Man, it's great to have you. Thank you for being a part. Jeremy Lilly has a good comment here. This is a long one. I'm going to read it. One of the things that I learned from creative writing, and I think I can apply to combats as well, is that every scene should support your story and serve a purpose in moving things forward. That's actually a really, really good point. Um, sometimes we are just thinking, well, what should I do? What should I throw at them? If there's a reason for it to be moving the story forward, that's even better because there's story progression while you're doing the encounter. So that's actually excellent advice from Jeremy Lilly. He said, combats should do the same thing. Sure, have your party fight something cool in a cool place, but there should be a good reason as to why, not just because you needed an encounter for the evening. That's a brilliant piece of advice that is not in what I'm writing. So that's a bonus tip from Jeremy Lilly to give that encounter Wait with the story so that it's not just, okay, hit the pause button. All right, kill the Minotaur. All right, back to the plot. Alexander says, encounter that feels like X. I think you can get in trouble for that. <laughs> Thomas Carpenter, what's up? Josh, listen, I want an encounter that feels like a Vietnam War movie using a large horde of baddies similar to We Were Soldiers. Bingo. That's it. That's what you're doing. And as simple as that sounds, starting off with that gets us so far so fast. When people tell me that they can't think of an encounter for the evening or whatever, and I say, okay, well, what, you know, what, what's your mission statement? What's the tone and the feel? They're like, most of the people lately, they're like, the what? What are you trying to do? If I'm watching an episode of a horror television show, and all of a sudden there's a slapstick comedy bit in the middle, it had better have a good reason. Or it feels disjointed. So by developing your mission statement, which that was a sick, that was a really good mission statement. By developing that and committing to it, you're lining yourself up with the next step, which is, I think, going to be pretty cool. Let me see if there are any more. Uh... Neftali says, I want an encounter that's badass using robots that's similar to Legend. Perfect. Now you know the target you're trying to hit. Ben Buckner, I want to create an encounter that feels like survival action using a dinosaur stampede similar to Jumanji. Boom. Now here's, let me show you the pattern in all these. I'm not even going to read my examples because yours are better. Um, the pattern, the through line, you're hearing this, right? 
Every one of you, including me, we imagined these scenarios, didn't we? And by adding that little stinger at the end, the reference point, if people know the reference point, boom, I get it. I'm there. I know it. I know what you're trying to do. So here's the fun part. I love this. This is step two because that's just step one. But how do you get from that to a finished encounter? And that's challenging. So here's step two. Step two is your stream of consciousness tone and feel list. And this is fun. This should just get to go nuts. So read your mission statement out loud and then immediately begin to list words, phrases, thoughts, whatever that spring to your mind after you read it. Remember, nothing is off limits. This is just a starting point. You're brainstorming. You also don't have to stay within your game system or genre for this, okay? So I am going to stick to uh, one of the ones that I put on the paper for the rest of the example so that I can continue with the, the finished work I've done without having to kind of feel my way around. But one of the ones I put here is I want to create an encounter that feels like a high octane action sequence using a train rescue similar to something like the Expendables. Boom. So what's my list look like? Well, the next phase is I just go, okay, and there's no rules to this. So I just wrote Runaway Train, Dusty Desert, Wild West, TNT, Fisticuffs, Rescue Mission, Broken Bridges, Deep Ravines, Sylvester Stallone's Kettle Drum Face, and his lip. No, I didn't put that, but that's just extra. So this next part, as silly as it sounds, it's a stream of consciousness. You just start writing words, little phrases, do, 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 until you have like eight, seven, eight, just kind of just, there's no rules. This is about just whatever pops in your head. Notice I threw in some, there's like Western stuff. I, I even put Wild West, like what's that? It evokes a specific tone and feel. From here, because this is step two, now I have a list for me to comb through to make my fragments. And the fragments are the things that you place into the encounter to give it shape. So, let's talk about this. Rebecca Saunders is here. What's going on? Good afternoon. Brad Proctor's here. Jonathan Bell. Neftali says, oh God, thank you, thank you, thank you. I got it. I want an encounter that's action horror using zombie fairies that's similar to Hot Fuzz. Boom! Do you see how this is instant ideas? Do you see how by just doing this, by putting those pieces together like that, it's like the ideas don't stop. I could probably get all of you to write me a full encounter right now. But this is the trick. I'm telling you, follow this process. The next thing you're going to do is write that quick list. So for Hot Fuzz, I would do Unexpected Gore, Simon Pegg, uh, Bulletproof Vests, Good Cop, Bad Cop, um, you know, there are a couple other things I don't want to spoil the movie, but I would start writing those things down. Here's the next thing you do. You take those things from the list and pick three. You pick the three that speak to you the most. The three from your stream of consciousness that inspire you. And you make those into your fragments. Now, fragments are basically, those are the pieces that we're going to place in the encounter. So for me, what I chose for the Expendables, I said Runaway Train, Dusty Desert, and Broken Bridges. So those are the three things I'm like, this is what I'm going to do. Now, I know I'm running a high-octane action sequence. This is my mission statement. We're using a train. It's going to be a rescue situation similar to the Expendables 3. So in that, I'm going to use Runaway Train, Dusty Desert, Broken Bridges. Those are just three. So make, when you make your list, you choose three. Now, step four you turn those fragments into mechanics. So now I've got three things. I've got my runaway train, I've got my broken bridge, and I've got my dusty desert. Now I'm gonna link some really light mechanics to this, and then, which I'm gonna do in a second, but there's some really good comments and I do not wanna miss them. Josh Glisson, surrounded, low mob HP, chaos, jungle working against PCs, exactly. This is the exact kind of list. Joshua Law, hashtag keywords. Chris Wilhelm, I want to create an encounter that feels like, that feels bittersweet using elemental samurai giants that is similar to Grave of the Fireflies. Boom! There is your elevator pitch. There is your mission statement for the encounter. 
Now you make your so from here I chose my three and I'm gonna attach these mechanics. And and here this at this phase you're just like, alright, what can I throw in there that I link to these things that just make the combat more interesting or the encounter more interesting? In this case, we're doing combat because I think that's probably the most popular encounter. But you could do this with political intrigue. You could do any of the three bullet points you pull off your list and make into your fragments. You just attach any uh, mechanics for your chosen system. Now, I'm going to use Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Runaway train. The train is moving so quickly that to walk along the top of it, you need either a strength or dexterity check to move your full speed. If not, you move half speed. I didn't even put a DC because I'm not, I'm not to that point yet. Maybe, I, maybe it's a DC 10, something super easy, but they still have to roll. Um... Broken Bridge, in 2d6 plus 2 rounds, the train is headed for a broken bridge, and that's not good. Why do I do 2d6 plus 2? Well, because I'm looking for a high-ish number, and if they roll snake eyes, I don't want it to be 2 rounds. So by building in 2 more, so it's 2 plus whatever I roll, at a minimum it's 4 rounds. So that way the players have a little bit of time to try to figure out a solution. But anyway... In 2d6 plus 2 rounds, the train's going to go off a bridge. Boom. That's it. That's what I do for Broken Bridge. And then Dusty Desert. Each round, I roll a d4. On a 4, a hard wind blows, and it does, like, sand damage. 1d4 damage to everyone who doesn't make a con save. So, and I'm doing that d4. Now, this is a lot kind of going on. I've got a lot of little rolls to keep track with and tinker. You can dial that in and out. The point is, now you have three mechanics... Three very basic, clear mechanics to now add. So now I have a moving train with dust storms going on around it and a broken bridge. Do you see how we have taken our flat, static, generic, plastic encounter that was living in our head? And by following this mission statement, we're then able to make this list of words, pull three of them, and then attach mechanics to them. By doing that, now I place my monsters... And you can make them whatever you want. But now I place my monsters and think about how much more interesting this is. And pick any monsters you want. Let's keep it so that it's so clear that this is cool no matter what. Let's use goblins because they're the most tropey and common. Goblins. Albino goblins. No, that's too snowflakey. Goblins. Good old-fashioned, green-skinned, trash-hoarding goblins. They're on top of the train. But it's the my mission statement is it's a train rescue. So now the players have to get three cars down and save their, you know, comrade in the first, uh, in the engine car before it goes off the bridge. And there you go. That's your encounter. That's a much more dynamic, interesting encounter, and I know what I want to run because I started with a mission statement and then I fleshed it out and put a bunch of bones right on the skeleton. That's it. That is how you do it. Um, now, of course, this is difficulty you know, and system agnostic. You could, it's up to you with your flavor and your flair, but you could easily make that for level ones. You can make it for level tens, adding different things to the, you know, the, the three fragments we took, putting more difficult mechanics or more damage or adding things like that, etc. But I mean, you could use this for anything. So, uh, let's look at the chat here and let's keep it going because there are a lot of really good ones. Man, Chris, your encounter, that sounds so good. Alexander says, During my early DMing days, I used to rehash the encounter I liked because I wanted to recapture that feel again. And it always turned into a crappy one. It even ruins the memory of the original encounter. Oh, that's so smart. Nowadays, when I make encounters, the feel plays one of the biggest elements of the encounter. The right mood can turn an encounter with a plain location and generic monsters into a memorable one. That's also very, very true. Scott is here. What's up, Scott? Chris Wilhelm says three things. Plagues, monsters, a curse. Im oh, plague, monsters, a curse, impossible choice. Perfect. That's the jam right there. You're making an encounter. Let's see here. Krishna Sami. Did I say that right? Krishna Sami. Says much love from India. What's up, man? Much love. Chris Wilhelm. Plague, monsters. They're twisted monsters that inflict poison damage. Monsters are cursed. They were once good, but could be saved. And then to save the people, another group must die. Boom. 
Now you have a mechanic. And everything you just said lines directly up with your mission statement so that you're not outside of your tone and your field. By giving yourself direction, we thrive. If you liked this stream, check out the article. It's Right now it's the, the uh, main article on tabletopterrors.com. You can check it out. Um, and this is part of the magnificent and prolific bar, uh, blog carnival. Like I said, John Four is the mastermind behind it and different blogs host it every month. Um, the topic we chose this month is encounter. So what you're gonna see is, go back to tabletopterrors.com often because as the month goes on, people with other blogs are going to put their encounters and their encounter blog posts in the comments. So I'll make sure to approve those quickly. And listen, go there and post your encounters. Post your lists, post your mission statements, it'll be great. Um, if you're watching this video, obviously you can post wherever you are, whether it's Facebook right now or YouTube later, post on here. What are your mission statement? What are your mechanics? What fragments do you choose? I wanna know all of it. We'll take a couple more comments and then we'll call it a stream. Oh wow, I pronounced it right. Josh Glisson, I've got the gist. Since I want the game I'm working on to feel like a Vietnamese movie that fills the first part of every encounter. The rest is which movie and what aspect makes it resonate. That's perfect. And by doing it, and the more you do this, the more specific you can get with your X, your Y, and your Z. So as you get better and better at this, you know your own brain and you can get a little more detailed with, you know, you know, if you go back to your example film, when you go to X, you can say, I want it to feel like the Russian roulette scene from Deer Hunter. Like, that could be the feel you're going for. It's very specific. Um, but again, that's kind of changing the formula a little bit. As you get better, you'll develop your own version of this so that it's like, yep, but then everything that you put in there can follow these guidelines and things won't feel disjointed and you'll always have, I think, way more ideas because you have a target to hit. Where most people get tripped up is that they don't know where to start and they just don't have any ideas. By throwing this out there at first, let the river flow. Rob Franklin is here. Josh Glisson says, exactly. Um, listen, we love you, and I love doing these streams. Keep an eye out because soon you're going to start seeing daily damage, which I think is going to be mostly world building, uh, but other questions and conversations. That's going to be live 10 p.m. Easterns on most weeknights. So offhand attack is going to continue. That's going to be these videos from the car, just kind of like, hey, what are we doing offhand? Um, you might see James in more of those, but there'll be more tips, tricks, and things like that, whereas daily damage is probably going to be more world building, mechanics, stuff like that. Um, but if you're not a subscriber, make sure to like us here on Facebook so you get notifications when I go live and when James goes live. And make sure that you subscribe on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed on YouTube, we would love to have you as a part of the channel it's youtube.com slash tabletop terrors. If you want to be uncommonly good at D&D &D and hyper creative, that's what we're all about here at Tabletop Terrors. Um, but we love you. Thank you for tuning in. This stream was amazing. Go make some encounters. Check out tabletopterrors.com. Until next time, may your dice roll high.